you, Jesus. Strength like no other. You sound good. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Yes. again let's proclaim it you are my strength yes Jesus strength like no other no one compared to his power strength like no other thank you Jesus it reaches to me no matter how low I am he can reach me you are Yo 
Thank you so much. God bless you. Acts chapter 2, verses 29 through 41. Just a little extra reading this morning. Acts chapter 2, verses 29 through 41. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and in his tomb, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah. Just a little bit lighter for me. He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 souls were added to the number that day. So far the scripture. Father, bless this witness. Lord, charge it with your power. Oh God, so that at the end of this exercise, your name is glorified your people edified and an alarm sounded for sinners. Lord, touch our ears that we will see what the Spirit, we will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, touch our hearts that your word will fall on good ground. Oh God, take root and bring forth fruit. These merits we beg in the name of he who died, rose again, and lives forevermore. Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We bless the Lord. I will just be sharing with you from the topic. We're in our series, The Church is God's Idea. The Church is God's Idea. And this part five is the importance of the Holy Spirit. The importance of the Holy Spirit. We don't have time to this morning to do a full introduction of what we have covered. So I'd like to ask you to go to our YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel at Morning Star Connect. And if you have the newsletter, all that information is there for you. You'll see four other sermons. Pastor Neil preached one as well on church is God's idea. And so we started out the series uh, with the scripture that where Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We, we looked over the very definition of church. The word is a Greek word that is ekklesia, which means the called out ones. Look at the person next to you and tell them you're called out. 
You're called out. Yeah, yeah. You're in the world, but you are not of the world. Yeah, that's why we don't talk like them. That's why we don't dress like them. That's why we don't act like them. Because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. He called us out to put his name on us that we might be sanctified. You know, for some people, sanctified is a bad word. Yeah, I remember when we were in school, my sister sitting there, there was a girl who cursed her one day and called her a sanctified and it's a not a nice word. I mean profanity, because to be sanctified is a bad word. Well, the truth is when somebody's living holy, they're a mirror to you that you are not. And you don't like that. When somebody is set aside living according to what God has called us to live and they're around you, you don't like it because you see that you're not living as God has called you to live. I'm not talking about the pastor. I'm not talking about the church doctrine. I'm talking about the word of God. And so when we talk about the church, we talked about those called out, sanctified and holy, set aside for the purpose and the use of God. I don't know about you, but I like the sound of being used of God. Anybody in here want to be used by God? Anybody here want God to use you? My God. Well, in order for God to use us, we have to let him set us apart. Yeah, we got to, you know, we got to be the one that's not like everybody else. You know, if you look at Instagram for the young girls and young men and Facebook and all those things, you know, you want to look like everybody else look. But how many know it's all an illusion? Nobody go around looking like that all day. That's ridiculous. I mean, who go around? I mean, it's just not even real. And so, so don't try to fo fo uh, follow something that's not even real. Instead, we line up with the word of God because people ought to be happy when they see us coming. They ought to be, that's the one who's got a good word in her mouth. That's the one who's going to lift us up today. That's the one who's going to declare a blessing over us. That's the one who will pray for us and encourage us. People ought to be glad to see you coming because they know that you are the light of the world. They know Know that you are the salt of the earth they know that you've been called out and that God is using you for his glory they know that the glory of the Lord is being revealed in you somebody ought to give him praise because the glory of the Lord is being revealed in you And so church is God's idea. If you want to hear all of those messages, please, I encourage you. I believe it'll bless your soul. Today we're talking again about church is God's idea. And the purpose of the church is to glorify God. Now, one of the reasons when we come here, we say, clap your hands. We say, open your mouth and speak well of him. We say, sing unto the Lord. Open your mouth and you sing. We say, dance before the Lord because we're giving glory to the Lord. There's something wonderful about giving glory to God. You feel different when you give glory to God because you're not bowing down to your problems. You're not bowing down to your your circumstances but you're telling your circumstance how great your God is you're telling your problems how wonderful your God is you're telling every situation around you that your God is the God of gods he is the Lord of Lords he is the King of Kings he does not ask permission to do what he wants to do he does whatever he wants to do and this is the God we worship when we come into his house this is the God we worship uh, the God that has been good to us uh, the God whose mercy never ends uh, I don't know about you but I need his mercy uh, I don't know about you but I need the Lord to have mercy upon me uh, I need the grace of God over my life uh, that is the good things that I don't deserve uh, I don't know about you but I don't deserve all the good thing God gives me uh, but because of his grace uh, because of his mercy uh, he makes ways for me because of his goodness because of his mercy he makes ways out of no way he turned things around I don't know about you but it is not hard for me to glorify the name of the Lord 
Lord. Do I have a witness in the house? We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We give your name praise. This is your house, and we glorify you in your house. Hallelujah! We have gathered in this house, gathered in this place, to worship the Lord and to give his name glory. We, the purpose of the church is also to edify the body. That is when we come together to encourage each other. That's why if you don't have something positive to say to each other, don't say it. If you can't, and nothing in your mouth but discouragement, keep your mouth closed. If you can't give somebody a compliment and lift them up, then keep quiet. When we come to the house of the Lord, we edify the body of Christ. So you have a part. Look at somebody and tell them you have a part. Yeah, yes, you have a part. When you see people, you lift them up. Tell them God is not through with you yet. Tell them your best days are not behind you, but your best days are in front of you. Tell them that God, you, God has more grace than you have sin. You can't out sin God. If you give him, if you ask him for forgiveness, the Lord will forgive you. He won't bring it back up again, but he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness. People are bringing it back up again. Uh, you know, you, have you ever been around people and somebody calls somebody name and the first thing come out their mouth is the worst thing that person ever did? I, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I always catch myself. Uh, that person is not known by the worst thing that they've done uh, because I serve the same God uh, that forgives me when I mess up. Uh, and so because of that, all we, we want to lift people up. Uh, we want to love on people. We want to encourage people. This is the house of God. We are the children of God. And if we're children of God, then we walk in the light of our Father. Then we resemble Him. And the Bible didn't say that God is just good, but I mean that He does good, but God is good. We don't just say that God loves, but we say that God is love. And everybody born of God must love. He said, how can you love God who you have not seen and you don't love your brother who you see he said you're a liar and so he's called us to love each other and to build each other up when we come together we ought to leave a whole lot better than when we came oh somebody ought to bless him we ought to leave encouraged we ought to leave feeling loved we ought to leave feeling motivated and inspired and the third purpose of the church is to sound an alarm for sinners. You know, in this passage today, we are reminded, we are reminded who Jesus is. We are reminded in this passage that Jesus is the Christ. We are reminded that he is the son of the living God. We are reminded in this passage that he is the only begotten son of God who came into the world through a virgin. That's why on Pentecost and in Eucharist and Christmas and Easter, we rehearse the Nicene Creed. Because I want you to hear, let your, let your ears hear your voice declare some of these truths about who Jesus is. And so the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. And that thing or that holy thing that, was, uh, uh, that she was conceived was of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus was born. And the Bible tells us that he went to the cross and he died for your sins and for mine. And I don't know about you, but it gives me joy when I think about what Jesus has done for me. It gives me joy because I know that he took my place. I was the one who was guilty. He was not guilty. But he took my place. So now I can sit in heavenly places in Christ. Christ Jesus because of what Jesus did for me. Now I am called a peculiar people. Now I am called the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did for me. And so we thank 
God this morning because even as we look at what is called the birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday, we're reminded that there is an alarm that is sounded for sinners. Jesus died so sinners could be saved. Y'all don't hear me this morning. It is not the will of God that any should perish. It is not the will of God that any should die and go to hell. Matter of fact, he said there is no more condemnation in them that are in Christ. God, Jesus Christ does not condemn you. So how can anybody else condemn you? He died so that you would be saved. He died so that you could be the righteousness of God. Don't let anybody cause you to walk in shame. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise this morning. If you once was in sin, but now you are born again, your sins are behind you. Somebody ought to bless him because their sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. This passage today reminds us that church is God's idea. In it, we see the importance of the Holy Spirit. Before we go into our text, I just want to share with you who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a what. The Holy Spirit is a who. He is the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is just not something we feel to make us feel better so that we can shout, so that we can scream, so that we can run around the church. All oh, that's good. I think, I, look, I don't, look, as long as we worship in the Lord, all oh, that's good. But the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The reason the Holy Spirit is so important to the church is that when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the third person of the Godhead on the inside. That means that you have God on the inside of you. You know, my best example of what it means to have the Holy Spirit inside you, to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is uh, Clark Kent and Superman. You know, during the day, Clark Kent is just a newsman. He goes to work and he writes stories for the newspaper. But when somebody is in trouble, he goes, used to be back in the day when I was uh, younger, he would go in a phone booth, but we don't have phone booths anymore, and he would put on his cape and his uniform. And the same little mealy mouth man who sat at the desk now got superpower. So now he can stop all the bad guys. Now he has power and strength, uh, and he can stop things that, that was going wrong and he can turn around evil things and, and he could be the, the source of good and, and uh, that prevails because he doesn't have the strength of an ordinary person but he has the, 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 the strength of a superhero and that's the way we are with the Holy Spirit look at somebody and tell them I'm not an ordinary woman I'm not an ordinary man uh, look at somebody and tell them say I might look like I'm ordinary but don't let this outfit fool you don't you don't let don't let this you don't let this hair fool you but yeah but 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 when you have the holy spirit you have the spirit of god on the inside the bible said when the holy spirit has come upon you you shall have power. What does that mean? That means you can cast out devils. What does that mean? That means you can cast out demons. What does that mean? That means you can pray and turn things around. What does that mean? That means you can lay hand on the sick and the sick got to get better. What does it mean that you have power? It means that you can declare blessing over people and over everything around them that's not right just fall back back up off of them. When you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, you have the power of God on the inside. You're not just a mealy mouse person. You're a person that when you open your mouth, atmospheres have to shift. When you open your mouth, 
uh, every demon and devil uh, that's nipping at your family, uh, every demon and devil uh, that's trying to discourage you, uh, have to back up out for you uh, because you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh, somebody ought to give God praise uh, if you know what I'm talking about this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, he said, uh, I'm not going to leave you. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He said, I, he said, I got to go away. And he said, if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. He said, but I'm going to send him in my name. And, and when he comes, he's going to be your paraclete. What does that mean? That means your helper. I don't know about you, but I need a helper in this life. I don't know about you, but I need a friend that stick closer than a brother. I don't know about you, but I need somebody that's with me in the midnight hour. I, I, I need somebody who don't give up on me. I need somebody who gives me strength when I need it. I need the Holy Ghost. Oh, somebody bless him if you need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said, you know, I, I used to say, oh, I, 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 I wish I was living when Jesus was living. I, I just want to hear him teaching. I just want to, I just want to be at his feet and I just want to be in his presence. And one day I heard the Holy Spirit said, and I, he said, I sent the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's God on the inside. That's Jesus on the inside of you. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have him on the inside. He talks with you. He walks with you. He encourages you. He lifts you up. He causes you to have superpower. When the enemy thinks that you are defeated, the Holy Spirit lifts you up. When he thinks he got his foot on your neck, you call on the name of Jesus and you get that power to do what you can't do without God. It is the Holy Ghost that makes the church of the living God uh, different from any other body that gathers. Uh, it is the Holy Spirit uh, that makes the church of God uh, the, uh, 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 filled with power, not just authority, but dynamite power. It is the Holy Spirit uh, that fuels the church of God uh, to carry out what God has declared that we must do. Oh, you need to give God praise for the Holy Spirit. I mean, those of you, you need to give God praise for the power of the Holy Ghost. For the one who gives us the power to be in this earth what he has called us to be. In the Old Testament, we see where the Holy Spirit would move on the prophets. The Holy Spirit would move on the men and women of God. One of my favorite passages of this is the Bible talks about how the Spirit of the Lord would move on Samson. <laughs> and I know his strength was in his head. And I know, but, but when God got ready to use him, his Spirit would move on him. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Honey, when God gets ready to use you, that Holy Ghost you got uh, is stirred up on the inside of you. Uh, you can't do it on your own, but you can do it with the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't do it by yourself, uh, but with the Holy Ghost you can do it. Uh, you can do everything God has ordained for you to do. Uh, you are more than conquerors. Uh, you're not, you don't just have the, you're not just a conqueror. You don't don't just have the victory he said you are more than conquerors uh, everybody with the Holy Ghost ought to rise up with the Holy Ghost in you uh, everybody with the Holy Ghost ought not go through Monday and Tuesday with your head down uh, everybody with the Holy Ghost ought not go through Wednesday and Thursday ifing and humming and mumming uh, everybody with the Holy Ghost ought not be wondering what's gonna happen and what's gonna turn around uh, honey you got the third person of the Holy of the Godhead on the inside of you. You've got God on the inside of you. There's nothing that you cannot go through. There's no victory that's withheld from you. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise because you have the victory.
victory through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm almost through. You know, that is why, that is why it was 12 men that Jesus chose and the Bible said that they turned the world upside down. How many of you know because of the power of the Holy Ghost, we can turn Yonkers upside down? How many of you know with the power of the Holy Ghost, we can turn this, this city upside down? Why? Because God has given us what we need. He has given us kingdom authority. That's why he said, whatever you loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. He said, whatever you bound in earth, bind in earth would be bound in heaven. Why? Because you got the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he's given you the authority. He said that, uh, yeah, they had asked him, they said, you know, when will, when will, uh, Jesus come, when will you come again to set up your kingdom? He said, I don't, I can't tell you that. That's in the hand of the, of the Father. He said, but what I can tell you is that you will receive power when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I want you to walk out of here this morning understanding who you are in God. God, I want you to understand that there's nothing that you face that you cannot go through. You might get depressed, but you don't stay depressed because the power of the Holy Ghost is on the inside. You might get a little sad, but you don't stay sad. You might get a little anxious, but you don't stay anxious. You say, what about people with mental health? I believe in therapy. I believe in getting help. And I also believe in the power power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. I believe as the scripture has said that those who call on the name of the Lord, if you call on Jesus, I believe that Jesus will come and see about you. If you call on the name of the Lord, the scripture said those who call on him will be saved. If you call on the name of the Lord, we see see throughout scripture that God hears us and God answers. And so when the enemy put thoughts in your head and you know they're not good thoughts, call on the name of the Lord. When he try to put you down and try to keep you down, call on the name of Jesus. Oh, when he tries to get you to walk away from God, call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you ought to bless him because he answers those who call on his name. And the Bible tells us in Acts 2, 1 through 4, and Pastor Neil read it, that when the Holy Ghost came, that it fell on each of them that were in the upper room waiting for it, waiting for him. <laughs> that the Holy Ghost fell on each of them. I'm so excited this morning because Jesus declared that in the last day he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. I'm so excited because he talked about the sons and daughters and he talked about that we will prophesy because he would pour out his spirit. I'm so excited this morning because we are not ordinary men and women, but we are men and women full of the Holy Ghost. And for those of you who don't have the Holy Ghost, this is a good day to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For those of you who already have the Holy Spirit, this is a good day to be baptized afresh. This is a good day to be baptized anew. The scripture tells us toward the ends of this text, he begins to tell them, this is all of Acts chapter 2, he begins to tell them about the Jesus that he had, uh, that, they were, that he was preaching about. This is Peter. Peter said that God has raised this Jesus to life, this Messiah, the, the Christ, 
the chosen one of God. He said God has raised him to life and we are all witnesses of it. He said that Jesus is exalted at the right hand of God. That's, that's the hand of authority. He has received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit and has poured it out now on what we here see, what we see here now. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit comes from Jesus Christ? How many of you know that he has poured it out? So when you have the Holy Spirit, how many of you know you have God on the inside of you? Don't you let the devil tell you that you're less than. Don't you let, you got the same Holy Ghost I have. You got the same Holy Ghost Pastor Neil have. You have the same Holy Ghost Sister Cheryl have. All, honey, you got the same. Holy Ghost. You need to tell yourself, I've got the power of God on the inside of me. This power that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. There is nothing that you cannot do in God because you have God on the inside of you. You have the power to live right. You have the power to cast out demons. You have the power to declare the word of the Lord. You have the power to cast down strongholds. You have the power to destroy yokes. You have the power to break chains of addiction. You have the power in the name of Jesus. Come on, stand to your feet. Glory to God. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have the Spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. That was sent on the day of Pentecost about 2,000 years ago. And that same Spirit of God is here today. I just want you to lift your hands in this place. Glory to God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. If you just, my God, somebody shout, Holy Spirit, fall on me. Come on, just don't worry about who next to you. Just Holy Spirit fall on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Baptize me afresh. Baptize me anew. Don't worry about who looking. Just Holy Spirit. Yes. Fall on me. Fall on me. Fall on me. Pour out your spirit on me, Jesus. Oh, I want to be filled again with your spirit. I can't live this life without you. I can't make it through without you. Oh, baptize me with your spirit. Come on, open your mouth. Pour it out. Fall on me. Fall on me, Holy Spirit. Fall on me. Fall on me. Lord, I need you. I need you. Oh, God, I surrender. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, and within you, with you, he is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you. 